Hi everyone, how are you doing? Woo, yeah. It's crazy in here, Ibiza. Party, party. Um, hi everyone, my name is Andrea Magdalena. I'm the founder of She Said So, and I have the incredible pleasure of being here with uh, Trevor, who I've also had the pleasure of meeting earlier, a um, few months ago in Miami. Just kind of bumped into each other and started talking, and I guess uh, established a good connection. For those of you who don't know, um, Trevor is the founder of Friends with Benefits. Friends with Benefits is one of my favorite um, DAOs out there, social DAOs. Um, it has been described by New York Times as the crypto social club, no, the social club running on crypto and vibes, which I can attest to because I've had the honor to work with a couple of their local chapter leads in New York and in LA to host some events uh, in partnership with She Said So, and the vibes have definitely been there. Um, but enough about that. I want to... This, this whole point, the discussion of, uh, is um, to introduce Friends with Benefits and get to learn a little bit more about how it works, uh, what exactly, you know, what is the governance behind um, uh, a DAO, what does it work like for them, what are they doing to empower diversity in the Web3 space, because we know that's important, so I'm not going to get into that. But before we get to that point, I want to know, Trevor, how, how did you get to Friends with Benefits? What is sort of your background leading up to this moment? Yeah, I suppose it's a pretty circuitous path. Um, the last time I was in Ibiza, I was DJing. And so I was an artist producer and kind of software developer for most of my adult life and stumbled into crypto in like 2013 and was just really enamored with this idea of programmable money. I had seen what programmable media did to my industry. I was signed to Interscope in 2007 as a part of a rap group. I didn't know that. Ah. You were a DJ, but the whole... I make a little beats and hide in the background of rap groups as well. Um, but I got to watch the internet eat the music industry and recognize that programmable money, like programmable media, could be pretty revolutionary. And what was really amazing for me was to watch this idea, you know, and come to pass. And then when the introduction of general purpose blockchains and Ethereum, my, my mind just started spinning. And so my path was really, you know, I've always been passionate about artists and creative people. And really I talk about innovators, um, you know, technologists, artists, whatever it is, and trying to create better incentive models for people that are actually innovating. Um, I often talk about this kind of forever 21 era where most of the value capture happens at like fast follow. So if you're this interesting designer or artist creating a sound, a lot of that value is captured by people that kind of like reappropriate it and then make it more accessible or have better distribution. And so I was really nervous about that idea. FWB was the product of trying to show my creative peers that Web3 would allow value to uh, accrue to the edges of a network versus what they had known, which is social networks or Web2 properties that had all of the value accrue to the center of the network, founders, VCs, et cetera. And so that was a simple simple kind of um, you know, idea. I got to hang with, with Cooper Turley, who's sitting over here at one point for a coffee to talk about the tokenomics, and we pushed it into the ether, you know, really over like eight, 10 hours of building. And it's a living, breathing organism that has a life of its own, and it's kind of taking us here. Yeah, once again, I've had the chance to interact both digitally and IRL with some of the people in FWB. I love the events that you folks are doing and the community you've created as a fellow community builder, I feel like curation and programming and just the culture that you build within the community are, you know, there's some of the most important things to, to, to think about beyond the business model or, you know, the, 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 the technical side of things. Um, and so just... Prior to um, FWB, you've also um, co-founded Brud, right? Um, which is a startup technology, creative technology startup behind one of your favorite uh, digital characters out there, little Michaela. Can we talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, certainly. Um, so I feel like a lot of these themes I've been interested in for a long term are kind of hitting this kind of crescendo, but you know, Brud Inc. is what I would call a spatial computing company. It's probably better recognized as like a metaverse company now, but there was this kind of macro thesis in my head that there is a shift in value from what I would call meat space, like our IRL interactions, to these virtual economies. 
And um, I thought that, you know, unlike the kind of like dominant narrative, which is kind of the ready player one version, where there would be these, these worlds that people would want to inhabit, I actually felt like there would be characters that pull us into these virtual spaces. And we really wanted our, 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 our company, Brut Inc., to be kind of like this modern Disney or Marvel where we could create this IP that could act as a bridge between Web 2, Instagram, Facebook, whatever else, and kind of Web 3 or our coming spatial computing future. I always thought the kind of like private goods and economies piece would probably come five, 10 years after, but I think COVID accelerated those things. And so we're in this moment where a lot of the ideas we've been talking about are converging, these, these, these virtual spaces that have now been met with virtual economies. And so uh, Brut Inc. was acquired by Dapper Labs six and a half, seven months ago which is quite cool for everyone. Um, and so now we're working on kind of both these things full time. We're working on DAOs in the Flow ecosystem, and we're not only decentralizing the celebrity, which is what we did, you know, Michaela is run by a whole team, but we're actually gonna be decentralizing the whole org. And so our Brud Inc. is going to become Brud DAO, and it's gonna be a whole can of worms, and pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I would love to see that. I'm definitely keeping an eye on everything you do and feeling super inspired, by the way. So. Very kind, likewise. Keep, keep doing it. <laughs> Um, all right, friends with benefits. How I know you mentioned, you know, it took like eight to ten hours, which is wow. I'm quite that's incredible. Uh, but some of the best ideas, you know, come like that in the spur of the moment, and you just kind of have to act on them as they come. But when it came down to building the community, how did it actually work, person by person? How did you, you know, curate um, uh, those people? How did you? Yeah, I mean, maybe I can qualify that for folks that don't know what FWB is, but Friends with Benefits, cheeky name, is, is really that. It's a group of commu it's a community, a group of people um, that have you know, tokenized access to primarily a private Discord, also increasingly live events, physical products, and other things, with the idea that as the community adds value to that network, whether it's via Discord or those events or other things, the value is then reflected in the tokens that they're holding. Um, people have called it kind of like a, a digital Soho house, a tokenized Soho house. Um, and, and, you know, in building the community, what I thought about was, you know, it was pretty early days. It feels like, you know, dog years, or what's the movie, we're like on Mars, you know, in crypto, I feel like it's the, you know, 10, 20 years for every month that you spend in the space. But we were building with the idea that we wanted to have a space for cultural, I want to say culture industry people that were curious about Web3 and kind of emergent virtual economies. And so what I was looking to identify is, hey, Holly Herdman, you're like an incredible thinker and artist that I'm a fan of who also is thinking about how to build in this space come join this chat with like-minded people. And I often talk to people who want to build communities and just say like, find a niche that you're passionate about and think of it like a group chat that you would start if you care about F1, <laughs> like pulling in the F1 chads or whatever it is. And we just started pulling in people that were curious. And before you know it, that attracted other people at some point, you know, was Mike Shinoda of Lincoln Park joining, Virgil Abloh, rest in peace, joining, um, and you know artists like Jordan Wolfson or Lucy Bull, kind of painters and, and, and contemporary artists that I that I really adore. And so I think we were able to create this community that felt a lot different than a lot of the crypto pump and dump telegrams that people were familiar with. And I think that was quite interesting. And what was the tipping point? At what point did you like stop inviting people and people? started wanting to join in. It's funny because it feels like throwing a club. Like when I used to DJ and you're like, is anybody gonna come? I don't know, it's 12.30, nobody's here. And then people start showing up and texting their friends and you know, it, it starts to catalyze and, and really happen. I, I think for us, the tipping point, um, you know, I think we started in September 2020? feels crazy. Um, I think by, by December, January, NFTs had really kind of captured the clubhouse zeitgeist, and you couldn't really escape a clubhouse with people kind of pontificating about how NFTs are going to change the world. And people wanted to figure out how they worked, how they could contribute to their own artistic practice. And I think it became clear that FWB was a place where you could find those answers. And so I think that was the moment where we hit this inflection point. And then from there, it's just network effects. And I think people being pretty excited that these tokens they held um, were rep representing the value that they were contributing to a network, which felt brand new. And that was really kind of all of it was like, mind virusing a generation to say like, you don't need to create value for Mark Zuckerberg for free. <laughs> like you can participate in the upside that you create, which shouldn't feel novel, but is. 
And speaking of governance, when setting up a DAO and putting people together in, in that way to collaboratively work to increase not only their own personal value, I guess, within the community, but also the community overall, how, how do you go about that? To me, it feels like the most difficult thing, you know. Uh, we spoke earlier in the green room about how there is, the hope is that this sort of framework, the Web3 decentralized framework, will enable more democracy, but at the same time, we, you know, we know there are instances where that doesn't quite happen that way. Democracy is hard. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but democracy is hard. Um, well, I think when we were starting it, the idea was to keep it very simple. A lot of these concepts were pretty new for folks. So we tried to make the tokenomics very simple, a million tokens. You needed 50 to get in. That, but you know, as, as demand increased on a fixed supply, number should go up. That I think was easier for people to grok. On the governance side, what we had to identify was A, people who have like the skills required to contribute. And what are those skills, by the way? Pardon me? What are those skills? I think, you know, more than anything else, you're someone who's deeply curious, right? Because the reality is this stuff is changing every day. But someone who's deeply curious and interested in learning at a rapid pace and someone who can communicate oftentimes in written ways pretty, pretty well, in my opinion, because a lot of stuff is happening in Discord or in asynchronous ways. And so identifying folks that are really smart, that actively want to contribute and can commu communicate well, um, we just try to identify those people and then build little teams, right? To kind of create objectives. I think give people resources. You kind of give people a little bit of leeway, let them build, and if they execute at a high level, give them more resources. Um, but the, the governance piece is interesting because you know one of the challenges that I think every DAO has is, is getting people out to vote. So those that aren't familiar with DAOs, you effectively have tokens, sometimes non-fungible tokens or NFTs, other times fungible tokens. FWB is a fungible token, and we allow people to vote on proposals. That could be anything from, hey, we want to buy a chunk of a Chinese restaurant in LA, a real proposal, um, to, hey, we want to modify the token threshold for entering the Discord. And people have experimented. You can do kind of one address, one vote. So oftentimes, people are concerned about people being able to spend their way into attacking governance. So if I'm one really wealthy person, I could market buy a ton of tokens and then do some more nefarious things th through governance. And we've experimented with both. We've done one, one wallet, one vote stuff. We've done votes where it's kind of a more direct democracy or kind of pure democracy. And I think what I love about the Web3 space in general is that we're speed running a lot of the histories of Wall Street or democratic like governance. Um, they're also kind of more authoritarian models. It's kind of petri dishes that are exploring every different way to operate and organize people. And um, some good outcomes, some horrible outcomes, but I think in the process, we're gonna stumble into some pretty magical stuff. And you referred to FWB earlier as the digital Soho house, which we know is you know, um, equivalent to exclusivity, I guess. As a black founder, I'm sure inclusion, diversity inclusion is at the heart of, you know, what you do is a, a major value to uh, introduce within everything that you do. So tell us a little bit about what Friends with Benefits are, are, are doing as a community to um, make the space more inclusive. Yeah, I mean, I think at the core of it, it was always this idea that creative people, in my opinion, have been left behind and kind of uh, you know marginalized by the, the the most recent and kind of like uh, technological advancements. I think they've been exploited, and so at the core of it was how can we empower people that have traditionally been on the outside of technology and make sure they have the education and the skill set to make informed decisions and shape their reality. Beyond that, yes, black founder, um, uh, rare, extremely rare, and based. Um, but yeah, and then you know, uh, we, we, we try to create a team that reflects the community that we have and that we want to build. Very early on, you know, a woman named Patty Hausman, who I had worked with at a record label in the past called Photo Finish, raised her hand and was like, I would love to learn DAO operations because I've you know, run record labels. What's more chaotic than running a record label in the last 20 years? I could probably figure out this, this DAO thing. And she's absolutely smashed it. She's now helping a lot of the major Web3 protocols that are building DAO operational software define their products. And she will shape how DAOs work in the future. You know, Ariel, who a lot of our editorial arm, felt there was an opportunity to rethink um, how editorial and how like you know written work looked and worked in Web3 and has shaped that stuff. What's cool is that we have teams that you know run the gamut from like 
18, 19 to like, you know, mid 40s, early 50s, people who helped shape web one and kind of like re rewrite the wrongs of web two, and people that couldn't tell you what Usenet is because they weren't born then. And, um, you know, I think at the, at the end of the day, like, we just want to try to make these ideas and these tools as accessible as possible, with the flip side being that oftentimes what defines communities is where you set those boundaries, right? As societies, we define boundaries that create net positive outcomes for communities. And so I often talk about, like, you know, uh, the upside of exclusivity and what it means to say this is what we represent, this is our tribe and how we're going to identify. And what I'm really psyched about in, in, in Web3 is the ability to fork, copy and paste great ideas and build your own. There's really high switching costs IRL. If you're not happy with the governance in your country, it's like kind of a pain in the butt to move somewhere else. If you don't like FWB, copy, pasta, start it again, change it, tweak it, and let people move and kind of like vote with their, with their tokens and, and their digital feet. And, and speaking of, of their votes, what are some of the most successful projects that the community has voted on and kind of... God, there are so many. I will say, like, I'm extremely online and pretty introverted, and the community really wanted to meet in person, which I was like, what, why? Sounds terrible. Um, but they, they voted on throwing these events, and they scaled from, you know, small hangouts and bars at crypto events to, like, FWB Festival in August, which is going to have some of my favorite artists in the world, you know, headlining a real festival. In Miami, we threw an event with Erica Badu and Azalea Banks, and 2,000 people showed up. It's totally surreal. Keep in mind, this is a community volunteering to organize and throw these events. People who have just done it. No food, beverage, events. Sounds crazy. People have time to do anything at all. But I really believe when you give people ownership in their destiny, they'll show up and execute at a high level. So that, to me, is crazy. Um, beyond that, you know, we've shipped energy drinks. One of the things that I'm really passionate right now is there are really interesting opportunities in decentralized finance to earn yield on your treasury. And we're exploring ways to provide healthcare for our members, our DAO members, by you know, utilizing our, our, our DAO's treasury in really novel ways. And so there, there, there are interesting ways to solve for some of the social ills and the things that, have been, uh, that haven't been served by our public governments in these kind of novel uh, DAO vehicles. If, if you're from the U.S., like, the healthcare stuff is amazing, by the way, because if you're in the U.S., you probably know that dealing with healthcare there is, is horrible. You need to spend at least $500 a month to, you know, just get basic coverage, and then still there's the copay and all that stuff. So that's Nightmare. exactly the kind of issues I love, you know, to see the Web3 space solving. Um, and, and speaking of all the, you know, volunteers in the community, I just wanted to shout out Joey Rubin from the L.A. chapter. Legend. Legendary guy. Um, he's the, I guess, the food and beverage uh, dude who kind of came up with the idea of doing some co-hosted events. So wanted to make sure that, that he's shouted out there. Um, and I also met at our event, because of Joey, we met uh, with someone who got access to Friends with Benefits through a fellowship program, right? Like that's another way in which you make sure that everyone, despite of their economic um, resources can have access to, to the space. How, how does that work exactly? Yeah, so, I mean, we, people often describe FWB as a virtual solo house, but I think of it a lot more like a city. I think of like all kind of all blockchains and, and DAOs as kind of like little factions in these cities that are connected via bridges and other things. One of the things that's incredible about a city is you create these really sticky network effects. And one of the challenges is as those network effects compound, it can be increasingly expensive to participate in them. So New York City, rocks, expensive. FWB, really compelling, also seemingly expensive. So what we were trying to solve for is, is there a way to create a public good or utility that can introduce important people and then people who may be underrepresented into the space, and that was fellowships. And so that meant investors, people like myself, Cooper, et cetera, um, you know, contributing tokens that um, our head of fellowships, Pat, Pat Locke, who you may know as a DJ and producer, heads up, and people apply. Uh, and then we give memberships, and as part of those memberships, people are onboarded into Web3, they're taught wallet security. If any of you track board apes and see somebody getting their board apes stolen every week, we try to prevent that at FWB. Um, we teach them like how to understand and navigate the space, and then introduce them into our community such that they can be supported and hopefully pursue their ambitions and their own creative exploits or professional exploits. That's so, that's so. By the way, are there questions in the crowd? Because I want to make sure I leave time. If you, if you have questions later on, please raise your hand and I'll make some time for them. But in the meantime, I wanted to 
um, learn a little bit more about, you know, I'm not so sure who's in the crowd, what the level of expertise in terms of Web3 and the crypto space is, but for somebody who's new to it and wants to get into it, wants to introduce some sort of Web3 element, a DAO element, crypto, where should they start? Give, especially given the fact that this is a music, music industry community. I'm nerdy, but like I think if, if you're deep in music, you have that nerdy gene also where like you discovered Paul Oakenfold and decided to like dig deeper and all of a sudden you listen to like Paul Jefferson or, uh, or, or Marshall Jefferson or like Paul Johnson. Like I think if you have that ability to go from some like you know simple idea and deep dig deep into the crates, you're gonna love crypto because that's what it is. I would encourage you to go learn about blockchains. Um, there, I don't say that you need to read the white paper for Bitcoin, but if you'd like to, it's accessible, and I think you could probably could do it. There are guides that walk you through consensus algorithms and how they work. I think there are really great YouTube tutorials on like what a general purpose blockchain like Ethereum is, how some of the basics work. I think it's 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 cool to work at the application layer and think about where your skill set works immediately, but we're so early that if you can figure out how this stuff works, you're gonna be the person in the room talking about packets on the internet. And you're gonna have a really, a really huge advantage. So I would say that. I would say beyond that, you know, um, there's a really great article by some friends, other internet, and Toby Shorin called Squad Wealth. And I think we live in an era of squad wealth. Like build your squad, create your, your peer group, and share ideas, and battle test those ideas, and I think you'll be better served for it. And so. Grab some buds, share some articles, learn some stuff, do some close reads, some, some, some peer reading moments. I think it, it, it'd be important. I have to say, when um, we were organizing those events in LA and New York, reaching out to the music community to invite them, or you know, DJs to play, people to get involved overall, it was quite a polarizing response. Like Half of the people were like, yeah, this is amazing. I really want to come. Thank you for thinking of me. And half of them were like, oh, I don't know about this NFT stuff, you know. And I feel like there is, maybe it's just me, but there is this kind of um, bipolar response to it. Are, are you feeling that from the music space? Certainly. I don't know if you've noticed, we have a pretty polarized world. Um, I see it as a giant opportunity. I, I, I like, I think... A part of me is quite heartbroken that we have this like extreme these extreme opinions on either side of a spectrum, and it's hard to find nuance. But the the flip side of that is there's a lot of alpha and loud voices that are uninformed dominating these spaces. And so, like, if you just do a little bit of homework on anything, you can make an informed decision and often have a lot of upside. And so, I, I think I think Web three is one of those things. You know, if you're like, hey, NFTs suck because the climate reality. If you do a little bit of homework, you're going to realize that, like, you know, Bitcoin, even proof of work, is this energy arbitrage business. You're seeking the cheapest energy possible to make a profit on your Bitcoin. So most mining is used with renewables or excess energy that would be, like, you know, either flared off as natural gas or, or, or otherwise discarded. Um, and I think beyond that, like, proof of stake is a real solution that already exists. Plenty of chains using it. Ethereum obviously moving towards it. And so when you can kind of seek out that truth, you can participate in an upside that I think is going to be really beneficial to you and the world. Um, and so, yeah, I think, like, obviously you shouldn't be polarized. But if you do your homework and form your own opinions, you're going to be better served across the board. Yeah, I love that. And you kind of answered, we already answered my, my next question, which is, you know, what are you most excited about in the Web3 space? So I'll skip that. But I want to focus on what you're excited about within the FWB community. What's coming up? I'm definitely going to try to make it to that event. In yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is maybe controver I don't know if it's controversial, but maybe not super obvious. I'm interested to see DAOs, you know, which really have kind of like gained a lot of attention through this bull market, through a bear market. You know, like it's all fun and games when like the token is going up and up and up and up and everyone's excited. Are people going to be as excited to work collectively without some of this like infinite up only momentum? I, I think so. I think if you build things the right way and structure things the right way, you absolutely have people that can weather this weather the storm. Um, but th that to me is, I think, the, the biggest question mark. And I think also shaking out some of the grifters that give the space a bad name is, is a good thing. And so the tide pulling out might be good for getting rid of those former CBD salesmen turned NFD grifters or whatever. Oh yeah, we know a lot of those, don't we? Um, all right, pe people in the crowd, any, any questions? Hey. Hi, how's it going? Um, I'm Katie Croft, I'm actually a member of FWB. Nice to meet you. Woo! Um, so quick question, so 
would you advise, so if I, I'm an artist musician with the flexible IP multiverse concept. And I, I've been advised to create a creator DAO. And I've thought about, but then also people within FWB has, have said to just do a token gated discord. What would you advise as, as it relates to kind of spinning that up? Because obviously, I, I don't know, maybe I need to think about it more, but governance as it relates to, other than sort of choose your own adventure as it with um, making music, um, governance with an artist community could present an interesting gray area. So I'm curious to hear kind of what, how you might go about it. Yeah, um, and I missed the kind of first part there. What are you building again? So, um, so artist musician with a whole kind of, uh, I guess, multiverse concept. Cool. It's built around the music. So the music is the soundtrack to a world I've been building in Unreal Engine on four levels. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, I think with things that are, so I would say that there, there, there are things that are kind of entirely on-chain. If you're building a DeFi protocol, I think it's easy to kind of keep things in, like, inside of a DAO. Things that are a little softer and live outside of, I, I really believe in this idea of progressive decentralization. So starting with a more centralized team, really kind of shipping this product and slowly handing off more and more of that product to the community. Um, beyond that, I, I think it, the most important piece for me is getting people excited about what you're doing. And so I think if, if it's literally easy enough to start it in a Telegram or a group chat, I'd maybe start there and then migrate it, maybe with a token. But it, it, it's really hard, I think, to cut through the noise and, and kind of minimizing the friction to do that such that you can create that momentum is the biggest piece. Um, and honestly, I'd love to help you cut through the noise if we can, if FWB or myself or Amplifying or whatever it is, I'm, I'm all for it. But general thesis is like start centralized, start building a product people love, figure out how to tell the story, and then preach it get people excited, introduce a token as an incentive and a, and a way to kind of keep people working on the project and manage the craziness of a token. Sounds great, I'll do it. Yeah, thank you, it's a good question. One more. Uh, hello, thank you, I'm uh, Monique. I'm running uh, a company called Aconia. We are an NFT on-ramp solution. And uh, one of our projects is called Mauer and we're thinking about turning that into a DAO. But my question is like, where do you start? It's a, it's a great question. I think one, one place to start, and Cooper and I were talking about it last night, is how do you think about the token that represents access to the DAO? It's, it's pretty clear to me that NFTs have captured the heart uh, and minds of retail, and NFTs might act as a better token than like fungible tokens, which FWB is built on. Um, and if, if there's a way to kind of kickstart or kind of build capital by selling those NFTs, and then funding interesting operations with that, that feels like a pretty obvious path to start. Um, and people are pretty familiar, it seems like you would know how to mint NFTs, so a simple path would be like, in my head, create an NFT, figure out how to talk about a future and a roadmap that you're excited about so that people wanna buy that, and then you would probably create a community that is token gated. It's pretty easy to do it on Discord with either Collab Land or Guild, some of these tools. Get people talking in there, you know, probably onboard folks on how to make proposals, and then you can use tools, tools like Snapshot and Ethereum or the ones that we're building for Flow in the near future to make decisions, start deploying that capital and building stuff. And, and, and that's, that's stuff that I think, actually Cooper has written some things that are pretty, pretty good about how to start a DAO, Linda G as well. Um, there are some pretty good resources. Any more questions? Anyone? Yeah? Hi, um, I'm Duncan. Um, Hi. If, you want, if someone wants to join Friends with Benefits, um, am I understanding this right? They have to buy tokens to order to do that. And do they have to be invited as well as buying the tokens? No, they don't. So there is an application process. So you can fill out an application form. We have a, 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 a membership committee that invests those and votes on people. The idea is just to keep like grifters and scammers out. It's a pretty high acceptance rate. And then when you're, when you're approved, you can then purchase tokens on, on Uniswap, Uniswap Exchange. And when uh, you basically connect your wallet to our Discord and it verifies that you have those tokens so that you can participate, when you sell them, you get kicked out. And what's the, what's the effect of that process on the actual demographic of the group itself? I mean, do you have figures on that? 
Yeah, I mean, actually, I don't think I have core figures. FWB has probably published some of them. It changes day to day. The reality is we have a lot of Web3 native people, which definitely skews like millennial and male, which is why we're doing some of the things like um, the fellowships program to say, what are the voices that we don't have here? How do we get them in the door? Um, the other piece of that is, you know, very early on, what we did was we tried to identify creators that we liked and we would just support their work in Web3 by buying it with FWB tokens. So as a community, we'd go out and we'd buy NFTs on Zora or whatever else so they have the tokens to enter. And so it's one of those challenges that's just forever quite tricky. Like how do, you, how do you get people in that are gonna be net positive to the community while maintaining this threshold such that you can have a space, a community. It's hard to get to Ibiza to come to IMS. But at the same time, if you're able to invest in that, it's pretty clear you're passionate about what this community means and what you're bringing to the table. And just to add to that, you have two levels of membership, right? The global membership, which I guess is the more expensive tier, and then local membership, which is more accessible. That's correct. Yeah, there are, there's a five FWB local membership, so you can go to local events and hang out and stuff like that. You're better at this than I am. <laughs> this is why I should just I'm write code fan. and hide in the basement. <laughs> Do we have time for more? Just one more? Or no? Okay. Yeah, question. <laughs> Last one. Overruled. Okay, I'll just be really quick. Hi, Portrait XO. Thank you both. Um, you both contributed to one of my communities, um, Coquo, mm -hmm. a while back. Um, one of my questions is, uh, what's the most surprising unexpected learning that you found through Web 3.0 experiments that have, have been the most useful? I mean, candidly, it's restored my faith in humanity a lot of way. I think there's a lot of like latent potential and energy that's been kind of compressed by this like generational malaise. Everyone's bummed, shit feels bad. But I think given a taste of ownership and like a light at the end of the tunnel that things could be better, people will mobilize and do great things. I think it's easy to be like pretty pessimistic, but like the optimism is real, it's there, it's compressed, it's, it's looking for good outlets. And if you give it that outlet, people will impress you. People are magic, enable them, empower them. Web three. Love it. Thank you so much, everybody. Mm -hmm.